Perfumer Talk, Insar Oud, part two, we're back. A humbling experience uh, to be doing this. I, again, got to see this video before doing this. I asked the questions in, in audio and give him direction because our time zones are so off put. So at night, I'll do that and, and literally just leave him with the question and whatnot and film after he gives it to me. That's kind of the style we're doing. The question on this one was materials. Again, you're without your materials. Help me make sense of this odyssey, this journey. How does a perfumer do that? His answers. Well, you'll see in a second here. What inspired the notes and what inspired the way you're collabing? I think the big thing I didn't get personally, and, and he told me three times, it's, again, it's that trust thing I told you about was, you're really not smelling these things? Come on, Insar, come on. Is detaching myself and like, he's in this with me and everyone that's doing this. I know other people doing this collab. He's, taking himself apart and he's approaching it like we are. What's worse is, is he, he doesn't have these vials to smell. He's tried to sneak them into his country. They're making another attempt to sneak them in again. We'll, we'll see if that happens. I don't know if it's stuff I should be seeing on video, but um, yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to get it. So he has to take all of our ideas and just hope we're right. What an artistic project and how he describes it. You know me and originality. That's sung in my heart when he started speaking about that. I was like, yes. And and it, it, it sings with everything he's already done from an amber green tincture using that Neo one. Just he's experimenting, he's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing boundaries for the olfactory. It's showing, it's different. He's doing stuff um, without further ado. So that's the question, the materials, how are the materials chosen? And how are you even able to do this? Could you please explain what that means? Without further ado, in Sarud. So uh, what inspired the notes that went into Homeros well, uh, rather than focus on the uh, sensory notes that go into the uh, making of a fragrance, my departure point was to focus on this feeling that I wanted to convey. Uh, the way that I approach a work of art is, what is the feeling that I feel and how can I convey that from my heart into yours? That's the, uh, the, the quintessential definition of art is uh, it's like this uh, infectiousness, which is what uh, Tolstoy defined it to be. It's like catching the flu, you know, or the, you know, very uh, uh, saliently in our time, the, the COVID, you know, it, it jumps from one carrier to the next, from one host to the next. So art is to infect people with ideas, to infect people with feelings, with a message. If art doesn't have a message to convey, then quite simply, it is not a work of art. It is just a mercantile product. If you're putting together civet and oud and chocolate and vanilla and vetiver and whatnot, and you're thinking about the cost of every single ingredient and what it adds up to in the end and why you can mark it up to sell it, uh, that's not art. That's not art. That's just buying and selling. It's mercantilism. What an artist does when starting to, uh, to work on his work is he has a, an idea. He has a concept that he wants to convey. And my idea here is that we are all under lockdown. We are all cast away or entrapped or in any way that you can imagine limited in our actions in our lives we can't go about you know 
living our lives the way we used to. Some of us are stuck far from home. Some of us are stuck away from our families. Some of us are stuck away from our ateliers and our workshops and our ingredients. Some of us are away from our distilleries and we can't do what we need to do. So the idea that I had is how do we all come together in this time of being stuck? And the way to do that was through this vision of the castaway Odysseus, my, my buddy, my childhood friend, uh, the castaway reaching out and doing a collab, which in and of itself is unprecedented in, in perfumery. I don't think anybody's ever done that before in, in the history of perfume, to invite the smeller to become a, co a, a contributor to the scent. So the whole idea of the collab is to get together during this time of isolation and separation and impossibility of, of getting together. So that was the, uh, the crux of what I wanted to convey here. It was a feeling, the feeling of homesickness, the feeling of how do I, you know, break free from these chains that have been imposed upon us? How do I go home? How do I get home? That's the one thing. And then the concept of togetherness. How do we all get together in this time of separation and isolation and no handshakes and masks and no smiles that anybody can see? Okay, so that was the uh, the crux of it. That was the gist of, of uh, what inspired the Homero's perfume as an idea, as a feeling, as an emotion. Art is about feelings. It is about emotions. It is not about products. Art does not care if one person joins the collab or if one million people join the collab. The idea is the same. The message in the bottle is the same. The feeling does not change. The message is clear, crystal clear. And it is a time of using our voices in order to get these messages across so that we can maintain first our sanity and then uh, more importantly, our humanity. How do we how do we remain human in this time? Is by 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 talking to other humans, by reaching out, by connecting on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, on an olfactory level. If you're a musician, on a, on a musical level. If you're a painter, on a visual level. If you're an actor or a director, you know, in a cinematic level, in a Every art is just a is just a vehicle for conveying a message and a feeling. But that said, you know my uh, point of departure in in the uh, how do I make perfume? Well, uh, there was a school of uh, of uh, playwrights back in the 17th century France. They went against the grain of their intellectual and artistic age in that they didn't study any foreign languages, which was quite the opposite of what most of learned France and England and Germany and Italy were all doing. Everybody spoke Italian, they spoke French, they spoke German, they spoke English, and they knew the classics. They knew Latin, they knew ancient Greek, they could speak all of these languages. Somebody wasn't considered to be an intellectual unless they mastered all of these languages. What Racine and his, uh, and his colleagues did is that they purposely, intentionally didn't learn any foreign languages other than French so that they could have a absolute mastery of that one language and become the absolute best poets of their time. So my, how do I translate that in my perfumery work is I don't look at the French classics. I don't look at what Guerlain was doing at the turn of the 20th century. I don't look at what Rudnitska was doing when he was making his revolutionary fragrances. I've read about them. I've heard about them. Maybe I've smelt them, you know, unwittingly at a department store maybe 18 years ago. Yeah, you know, the, 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 the citrusy, uh, sharp, uh, all sauvage and so forth. I don't care. It's not relevant to me today. What I am doing here under lockdown, we are in unprecedented times and we need to come up with unprecedented works. So imitation or uh, the euphemistic, uh, you know, uh, way of putting it, is, which is what they used to justify it in my cases. They say, well, it's the highest form of flattery. I don't like it when it is done to me. 
and you know by a simple you know uh, you know uh, return of that token is I don't do it to other people. I don't look at the works of my contemporaries. I don't know what the uh, what the most uh, talked about perfumers in our day are doing. Uh, and what is relevant to me is the concept of being original, completely unprecedented, completely unheard of, unsmelled before. That is the defining factor for me. So, well, I, you can do that with civet, musk, cocoa, tobacco, narcissus, orange blossom, which are uh, the notes that I featured in Homeros, but that's beside the point because you can blend those in a million different ways to make a million different smelling perfumes, which is what we have in the, in the cola. We have five different perfumes, all unique, you know, with the different takes on these, uh, on these uh, ingredients. That's not the point. The point here is to make a statement in our time is to get the message across that's that's what it is is for us to come together for us to say that well now we want to go home in my case jordan you know, to this day jordan is not open you know i can't i can't go home i can't go to my atelier uh, jordanians i'm not even jordanian you know but jordanians can't go home they've got their children in jordan they're stuck in amman we hear the story every day you know maybe on uh, you know uh, july 1st the airport will open then they make it july 8th then July 15th, then August 1st, then the last we heard was August 18th. And then after that, the last I heard from uh, reliable sources is that don't expect anything to change until November. So, well, tough luck. I guess I can't get my hands on any ingredients. I can't do anything with my own hands. And I have to use these, uh, you know, webcams and, you know, long distance blending as my, my tools. Uh, the message in Homeros is that I want to go home and we need to come together. We cannot let these forces that are there, that are out there to separate humanity, uh, separate us. We can't let them rob us of our humanity. That's what I'm trying to say here. Breathtaking. Unbelievable. Thank you, Ansar. I... I'm not lying when I get the chills watching these videos. This is good stuff. This is stuff I used to watch the Insar videos all the time with, with Shaky and um, his weekly chats and just dive right in. And now we're getting them in this format. It's unbelievable. People that have questions, a couple of you said you're waiting for the right time. Now's the right time. Pour in the questions because as you can see, you don't know what kind of fill because we need to approach, I mean, we only get a certain amount of time, right? So I need to put the questions in the right segment and, and have the right fill around it so it flows. We don't, we don't have a back and forth Zoom call. We don't have a back and forth. YouTube doesn't have a multi-person thing here. So um, I have to give him the questions. He has to film. And then I approach it and come back and present it this way. So kind of give me yours and... I'll make sure that they fit in the stream and yeah, hopefully we haven't covered them. Um, never no bad questions, but yeah, let's collab with this whole media process as well. Right. Right. You guys have ideas too. It, it, it's amazing. I think in part three, I'm going to show the coffee. The coffee will blow your mind. After my first video, I literally go to my normal coffee shop. They just put up a summer coffee. This is not normal for Portland to have adventurous sugar flavors. Coffee, obviously, the way you brew coffee, the technical difficulty of coffee, but to add fresh aromatics to coffee just blows your mind. Here's the summer special. <laughs> Salted honey with orange blossom water and i was like what that's like literally the smell with the coffee add in some oat milk there we go rock and roll all right you and yours this is an awesome experience to do all love from the channel and be blessed <laughs>